All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2004 Dodge Intrepid. Up front is a 2.7 liter V6. Down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am very excited to be driving this Dodge Intrepid for a couple of different reasons. First of all, this car only has 32,000 miles on it. This is a low mileage, some would dare say survivor. And so if I ever wanted to review a Dodge Intrepid ever again, this is probably my best shot at reviewing the lowest mileage one possible. The second reason I'm really excited to be driving this car is because I grew up with 90s, 2000s, Mopar, Chrysler, Dodge vehicles. And so there's a little bit of nostalgia that's going to be going into this review as well. But let's get back to that 2.7 liter V6. Well, it's actually the smallest engine offered in the Intrepid. I didn't believe it. I thought that these were four cylinder vehicles, but no, no, no. They actually all came with V6s. The upper trim models actually came with bigger V6s than this. The 2.7 makes 200 horsepower, 190 foot pounds of torque, getting you 19 miles a gallon in the city, 27 on the highway, which actually isn't too bad for a V6 vehicle. However, this car is not spry, it's not sporty, it's not light on its feet, it's a 90s Dodge product. And I keep saying 90s Dodge product, I know this is 2004, this car was really designed in the late 90s. A lot of the technology in here is from the late 90s, and so that's why I keep calling it 90s Dodge as opposed to 2000s Dodge. 90s and 2000 Dodge, they're not really all that different anyway, so shouldn't really matter. Like I said, paired to it is a four-speed automatic transmission. It's fine. It's doing its job right now. Dodge has never been good at making transmissions. It's not a dual clutch. It's not anything crazy. It's not sporty. It is what it is. Last but not least, of course, the Intrepid is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four main gauges. On the far left is my fuel. Then I have my tachometer. Then I have my speedometer and my coolant temperature all the way to the right. Very, very easy to read. Very easy to see. They are white face gauges. You have to remember, this is sort of the fast and furious era of vehicles and so white face gauges were very much in in the late 90s early 2000s can't say they still are but at the time these were cool these were cool gauges on the steering wheel i have cruise control on the left and right a lot of options for cruise control and of course the steering wheel is the giant pillowy sort of course again from the 90s airbags weren't fully required until 1997, so this was still kind of new technology to be in every single car. To the left of me, I have my headlight and dimmer switches, and on the door, I have my power mirrors, power locks, and power windows, of which the driver's window says auto. Why won't you be auto? You said you're auto. Whatever. In the center, I have two climate control vents and then my actual climate controls themselves. Very nice here. It's plain and simple. The dials actually have good feedback. It actually has a nice click into each sort of slot. They don't feel super cheap. Obviously they are cheap, but they don't feel like bottom of the barrel, basic, basic buttons that I'm gonna break if I sneeze too hard. They actually feel a lot more solid than I expected. Then down below that, I have the radio. Now this is a very standard Dodge, Mopar, Chrysler radio you would find in a lot of vehicles from the same era. My 2004 Chrysler Pacifica actually has nearly the exact same radio in it, which is pretty funny. I like it, it works. I do have some bass and treble adjustments. You know, those push out buttons that are still holding on from the 80s. Then I have a little cubby hole, an ashtray, and the shifter. The shifter has a nice clunk into the first couple of gears when you put it in reverse and neutral, but once you get into drive, you're not 100% sure which gear it's in, so you do have to revert to the instrument cluster. Then I have two cup holders and the center console. Now, the seats are nice and comfortable. This is getting towards the end of the era of very comfortable seats. These feel like a, a couch you would get at Goodwill or something. They're very, very spacious, very comfortable. They feel nice. You sink into them, you know, it's more of a hug than a seat. And I really, really like that in these older American cars. This sort of started to end around the late 2000s with the Crown Vic was probably the last truly comfortable American sedan. Then we all switched over to heated seats with leather and memory and all that stuff. No, these are power, they're fine, but they're, 
it's a power moving couch at the end of the day and I absolutely love these seats. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2004 Dodge Intrepid and I am very surprised at the rear leg room. My knees are not hitting the front seat. This is my driving position. I have probably about inch and a half, two inches of space before my knees hit the front seats. This is very comfortable to sit back here. Like I mentioned with the front seats, nice and plush comfortable seats back here. I don't actually have a center console, unfortunately. Plenty of headroom, I am 5'11". That's really it, nothing really too else to say back here besides the fact that it's comfy and I have tons of room. This was Dodge's full-size sedan of the time. This is before they brought the Charger back. This was it, the Intrepid. Now we have to talk about the looks. I think this car is really, really ugly. I do. I think it's so like funny. It's like, it's very period correct, obviously. But I think this is really truly an ugly vehicle. It's bubbly. It looks bloated. It doesn't look happy to be here. It looks like a fish out of water. However, getting to my final point about the Intrepid is the nostalgia of the Intrepid. Well, first of all, let's talk about the name. The Dodge Intrepid was named after the battleship, the Intrepid, of which I have actually stepped foot on. It is parked in New York's Bay. It's actually a museum now. Highly recommend it if anyone's in New York City checking out the Intrepid Museum. But this car was named after the battleship and surprisingly, it shares zero characteristics with the battleship besides maybe the color. The color is slightly similar to the colorblind viewers. But I do love the name Intrepid because it, it, it sort of rings this American spirit. You know, you have to really put yourself into the mindset of 2004 really this car was introduced in 1999 but you know this was the era here in america of 9 11 a a world changing event especially here in the states we were so amped up after that catastrophic event we were so amped up with patriotism and we were all about america by american america first and when i say that i mean the entire country thought that not just a certain group of people everyone was pro-america everyone was american and this was dodge's american full-size sedan it was assembled in canada don't worry about that but this was the american sedan it was front wheel drive it only came with v6s get those imported inline fours out of here this was america and to me, this car holds so much nostalgia. I feel like I'm driving back from GameStop with my brand new PlayStation 2 and Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 ready to go. I feel like I should be putting my Nokia brick into the center little cubby hole. nostalgia for me is because back in 2003 we actually got a Chrysler 300M rental car when my family took a trip out to Maine and I remember sitting in the back seat and it was so cool to me and I remember actually when I opened up the door there was actually a little beehive inside the door and we had to call the rental company about it this car is comforting you know what it is it's like an old dirty sweatshirt 
I have a University of Kentucky sweatshirt I've had for probably the last six years now. It's missing the pull strings. The sleeves are a little bit chewed up. It never gets fully clean in the wash anymore. But every time I wear that sweatshirt, I think of what it means to me. I got it because my best friend was going away to that school. And I wore that sweatshirt for six straight years. That sweatshirt isn't special to anyone besides me because it has that comfort and that background embedded in it. And that's the same way about the Dodge Intrepid. To anyone passing me here on this road, this is a crappy old Dodge that probably should have been taken off the road years ago by cash for clunkers or just plain Midwestern rust. But to me, it's something special. And to the owner, it's something even more special. This car is owned by my good friend Max, and the car was originally purchased brand new by Max's grandfather. And he drove it for a couple of years until he unfortunately passed away, leaving a very low mileage car in Max's hands. Fond memories or not, there are memories embedded in this car. There's just something about it. I don't know, driving this car makes me wanna go home and look through my VHS tapes and my Hi8 tapes of the old Lego stop motion animation videos I used to make as a kid. I wanna break out the Lego set of the, the tuner garage that I had as a kid. I wanna go find that, I wanna play with it. I wanna break out my PlayStation 2 with the red, yellow, and white cords stick them in the front of the TV, load up Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, get a yellow Lamborghini Murcielago, and drive one of like the eight tracks they had in the game. For a 23 year old, this car is just absolute rolling nostalgia of the early 2000s. And with the world the way it is right now, a global pandemic currently still going on, a presidential election that could be anyone's guess, and so much uncertainty, the Intrepid offers comfort in that world of uncertainty, just like it did in 2001. It doesn't ride like a Bentley, but it feels like a Bentley in here. That might be cheesy, but I really do feel that way. Well, huge thank you to Max for letting me take out their Dodge Intrepid. This is just rolling nostalgia. I absolutely love it. I'm a kid again, and that's all thank you to Max. Max has an automotive YouTube channel as well. I will link that in the description below where they have a couple other videos of the Intrepid if you'd like to get more information on this specific low mileage example. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like it. Take care, guys.